Um, so without further ado, um, Zeus uh, Gracias uh, Tabuenca is going to present um, the self-reported most satisfying portion of his PhD thus far, which he is completing at the National Autonomous um, University of Mexico. Um, and take it away, Zeus. Okay, I'm going to share the screen. Uh, you can see it well, and also the, the pointer. Yeah, everything. Okay. Well, I'm going to present one of the, the tools we developed uh, during my PhD. Uh, I have been working with uh, functional brain networks uh, in longitudinal samples, pediatric, but this uh, toolbox can be used in any other uh, network, uh, structural or in animals. So uh, I hope it can be uh, useful for for the, for a lot of people. So, well, we can we can model the brain based on network neuroscience uh, as a network. So, uh, this network is uh, is uh, is based on elements that are interacting with uh, uh, between it, uh, with each other. So, when we do that, uh, we we use a, a graph. Uh, with these two elements that are the nodes, the regions in our case, and the edges that are the the connections of, of this network. Uh, however, if the if this network has a, a very big number of, of nodes, uh, there is a problem because the the number of edges, the connections, increases uh, quadratically, and this is a a problem in terms of uh, to find what of these uh, connections are relevant or which are are not. And Saleski and collaborators, they, they propose a method, it's called the network-based statistics, that they, uh, is based on finding this component that is a, this cluster inside of the network. And these clusters are connected if they have uh, connections in, in common. So these nodes uh, belong to the, same, to the same component because you can go to one to another just in, by, by these uh, steps. Of connections. So based on that, uh, we can test the, the probability to find a component just by chance uh, using a, a null distribution. So permutation the, with the permutation of the data, we can test if uh, what is the probability to find a component as big as one find it uh, in the observer results with one uh, find it by, by chance in the in the null distribution. Uh, and what they what they demonstrate is this approach. Uh, it controls the false positive well, as well as uh, other uh, multiple comparison methods. But it has much more uh, statistical power because if there is a big network and you use a von Ferroni fall discovery rate, uh, it's very very conservative. But uh, one of the limitations of this approach is it was implemented uh, only to to use general linear models. Uh, when you are working with uh, with missing data in a longitudinal, longitudinal data set, well, there is uh, there is a uh, it doesn't fit well. So uh, we propose to uh, an extension of this method uh, using a mixed effect model, uh, which can uh, precisely uh, uh, this, uh, you can handle much uh, much more precise this uh, this structure of the of the, of the variability within the subjects and um, we uh, are loaded to the to, to the as a, our packets in the CRAN and we are going to to apply it uh, make an example in the with the, with real data so well this is the diagram how the uh, MBR works so the input is uh, we put all the uh, brain networks together uh, we concatenate them uh, here is the at the sample level, and we want to uh, to test the relationship of any of the uh, possible connections with uh, explanatory variables. It can be genetics, behavior, etc., clinical groups. So what we did is we take two paths. First, the observer one. Uh, we test for every edge of this matrix. This is our um, and we test uh, uh, statistical tests, in this case, an F-test, to see the, the variability change 
along the sample. And what we can, uh, what we do here is we first use a, an a priori threshold. In this case, is um, any of the connection with uh, statistics uh, equal or higher to four is considered uh, potentially irrelevant. And the next step is to, to create this cluster, this, this component. So for example, these three connections are there were significant at the sample level because they have uh, nodes in common and connections in common. We, we say this is a component and this one is another component and is isolated to the other one because they don't have uh, here any, any connection in common. So we did this uh, a lot of times in, in permutation. In our case, it's a longitudinal data. The, the, the swapping of the permutation is within subjects. And we did this a lot of times. So at every permutation we did, we take the maximum component find it by chance. So we create that this uh, null distribution of the maximum component that you can find by chance. So once uh, we have this null distribution, we can test the probability to get any of these uh, components uh, just by chance. And we can compute these family-wise error uh, p-values. So uh, we take a public data set. Of, it's a longitudinal data set, the, the slim data set. Uh, it's public available, you can download it. They have uh, 333 participants, half of them males, uh, young adults, and 212 of them, they have two sessions, and 121, they have uh, three sessions. And they underwent a resting state fMRI and also psychometric uh, assessment in every, in every session. So we take, we model uh, eight by eight uh, brain networks based on the functional connectivity of the, of the resting state. And we want to relate uh, these networks with the anxiety scores. So we tested the network-based statistics uh, using just a general linear model of the three session and with balanced sample that is complete, uh, is a complete sample with no missing, missing data. They only have uh, 53. And we test also the linear mixed effects approach that includes uh, all the data, but even if they have, uh, it's complete or unbalanced or they have missing values. Um, well, what we found here are the, the results for, for both approaches. E here are the, this is a matrix of the, the significant uh, uh, connections uh, above the a priori threshold. And this is the same, but in a, in a circle size plot. And what we found is the, this is a single component because they have uh, connections in common with the cerebral and the frontal. And what we found is the, based on the null distribution, after using a 1000 uh, permutation, uh, the probability is, uh, is above the nominal alpha, that is, is 0 0.05. But when we take all, all the data, uh, we, we find a, an extra edge and also the, there are stronger uh, weights in, in the connections, in the, in the, in the connections at, at the sample level. And we have this component that is include the cingulum, cerebellum, occipital, frontal and parietal. And also uh, the, uh, the size of this, of this component is, is much, much bigger than any, any funded in the in adult distribution. So uh, using this, this approach of uh, linear mixed effects, uh, we were able to find a, a significant subnetwork that is relevant to, uh, to anxiety scores. But if we discard all these, uh, all these missing data points, uh, we, we wouldn't have the, the power to, to find a significant result. So that's, that's one of the main advantages of this, of this approach. Um, well, missing data is something that is very, very common in longitudinal data sets. So uh, we, we expect that this is going to be very, very helpful. So, and also in neuroscience is also increasing the, this, uh, the number on the, uh, on the, um, these studies with longitudinal uh, data. So we hope this is, is going to be uh, just useful. So we want to thank the SLIM data set, also Leopoldo Gonzalez Santos, uh, the CONACID, the, the repository of R, and also the communities of R, the Nas, uh, National 
Autonomous University of Mexico, Neurobiology Institute, and the Barry Conscious Lab. And well, that's all. Awesome. Thank you so much, Zeus. Um, please fill our question and answers. Um, I just want to shout out that um, Aditya, my amazing backend co-host, um, has taken all of the links that Zeus had in his PowerPoint and they're in the chat. So if you want to download this package right away, um, you're able to. Um, Zeus, I'm just very impressed with you making such a contribution to um, open source uh, analysis tools. So good on you for that. I was wondering, um, could you use your package? I don't know if you could do this with like um, simulated data or what, but um, are you able to do like a power analysis before you collect the data with a package like this? So you know like how much data you need um, for these results? No, we didn't implement that, but uh, well, it, it, it can be done. The, one of, well, one of the, uh, the good things of the, these R packets is that uh, you can upload, the, uh, upgrade a new version. Uh, and yeah, it would be a good idea to, to also include that to make, or, or even include simulations to see, uh, yeah, uh, power analysis. Yeah, it's a good. Uh, yeah, so I asked because I, um, oh, we have a question. Okay, don't mind me as I abuse my power. Um, hi, Zeus, great talk. Uh, does this method also um, deal with missing values within the matrices of each subject? Uh, you, you mean missing values within the, uh, at the, at the connections is the, is, I guess. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes, yes uh, it has, but... Uh, uh yes it has it has but um well we have a limit of if well it, would, it shouldn't be change the limit but if all of them are are uh, NA, nas uh, missing data so it doesn't work the uh, the function but yeah maybe uh, put a warning if there's a big cute number of, of missing data would be a good idea but yeah it, it works and it is it's a small number of or missing data is, is not a problem. Could this potentially work with um, like networks of people? Like I'm thinking of like teaming data where you're sort of looking at how uh, teams communicating with one another um, and how like roles emerge and stuff and connections uh, using people as the nodes. Yeah, it, it, it can be used to any, any, uh, any network. So yeah, but yeah, most of the times, well, in, in our field is usually are these brain networks, but yeah, it can be a social network. It can be a, a lower, a cellular network. It can be used. So yeah, you put, you can, as, as, as if, if you put the numbers, the right, the correct number that, uh, that represent this, uh, the connection and the nodes, it doesn't matter the, uh, yeah, what, what, uh, what kind of network it is. Right. And so we have an, uh, one more question from the audience. How do you define um, the a priori uh, threshold? Well, this is, well, uh, in our case, it's a bit arbitrary because we put it just because uh, for in our case, uh, we didn't have yet in the packets, but there are a, a couple of approaches uh, to find a, a proper threshold. But uh, right now we, we only have uh, yeah, this uh, arbitrary uh, threshold. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, we're gonna switch gears now and hear from...